Jonathan, um, can you speak to the environments that private 5G is being deployed in these days? Yeah, we have two great examples here with us today. Warren, a CTO from CellGP. Uh, their use case is, is super unique. Um, this is private 5G o over a race course over water. Uh, Warren, tell us about that. So with CellGP, we've got uh, what we call the, an F50 catamaran, which is a boat that um, has it. Uh, computers on it. I call it an IoT device because it has so much information that we need to get off the water onto the shore. So having 5G and private 5G uh, ability to have that to get the data off as quick as possible is, is a game changer for us. How much data are we talking about and, and what do you do with it? Where does it go? So we generate around 60 billion data requests every day. Uh, this is from the F-50 uh, yachts, the catamarans. Then also our support, our AI marks, which are about boys around the race course, and other support uh, uh, vessels on there. Uh, this data all goes back to, uh, goes over the private 5G network, goes into uh, uh, Shoreside. Then we use that, then we send it to Oracle Cloud, and then we, we move that data around the world. There's always challenges. It's one yeah. of the hardest environments out there, being, being on the water. But we're all wireless. Everything that we do is wireless. There's no cables or anything like that. So, uh, But uh, latency is our enemy, basically. We need to have that data as quick as possible to be able to, to, to run a race, to be able to show that race on broadcast, and be able to show that with, uh, with our fans on our social media and, and our uh, CLGP apps. What did you do before you had all this data, and what impact has it made on your sport? So sailing has always had certain data. We've always, it's, it's a very subjective sport. You're either out of the boundary or in the boundary. Uh, you're either first of the mark or last of the mark. So it's, it's, uh, you, we had data available to us, but this has completely revolutionized our sport. Steve? Uh, in what ways is JLR using the private 5G network to optimize your manufacturing floor? So we're using it as the, uh, as the mechanism to access our OT data, our data that's locked down on the shop floor in terms of machines, PLCs, robots, any of that data. We're using it as the, um, as the accelerator to unlock that data and then use that data for things such as condition-based monitoring, predictive maintenance, ultimately maybe AI, prescriptive maintenance. Um, it's our sort of fast track to that. Are we talking about robots or are we talking about people who are being enabled to do their job in a better way or is it a bit of both? It's twofold. It's connecting to the robots, the PLCs, the IoT sensors in order to ingest that data. Some kind of intelligence will then happen to, to extract insight from that data and suggest proactive maintenance steps uh, and replication steps ba uh, based upon that. But that data is only so useful um, as long as we get it to a maintenance operator. So we then use the private 5G to connect those connected worker devices and get that information to, uh, to them. Why not just use Wi-Fi? And we could. Some of the challenges we've had, though, are things like the signal penetration. It's a very complex environment. Um, a Wi-Fi doesn't operate on a clean spectrum. We have a number of interference factors, um, as well as the quantity of devices now, the, 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 the amount of connected devices that manufacturing wants on the shop floor, be that sensors, edge devices, connected worker devices, it becomes a challenge for Wi-Fi, um, whereas 5G doesn't have those same limitations, and it's also the speed to deploy. We can deploy a 5G network much faster. You can deploy 5G faster than Wi-Fi? Yes, based, based on the fact that you need a lot less um, radios, access points as such, therefore you need a lot less containment, you need a lot less resource to go and do it. We actually enabled our cores in our solid hold plant in a weekend. Are there lessons uh, or best practice that can be applied from that into other industries, Jonathan? I, I kind of think about mining, because mining is very much so a pop-up 5G, private 5G network environment, right? So they, they, they pop it up, they, they run their mining operations, and then they, then they, they break it down and, and, set, uh, and set it up somewhere else. So um, you know, part of the, the challenge as we as uh, SoGP has been going from country to country is getting uh, allocation frequencies for, for those those particular countries, and so having relationships, um, you know, with the telcos and the governing bodies, um, is has been a, a challenge. And so I think about that as as these mining industries. So mostly outside of the U.S., CBRS is a lot more prevalent here. Um, you know, being able to get that frequency and, and then you know shut it down and pick it back up on another other area. There might be a different frequency, might be a different telco, might need different radios, 
um, uh, you know, all the all the baseband and all that stuff stay the same, but you may have to change those those frequencies up as as you move around. So that that has been a challenge and uh, an int interesting uh, uh, use case as we try to look at cross industries for uh, for how we leverage uh, some of these learnings.